Welcome to the Clock Tower. I am Brandon. And today we're looking at Jobless Reincarnation. This has been a highly anticipated set with a couple different builds. We want to go and kind of dive right into those together. We have an eight standby build, and then we also have a choice pants build. Starting off with the eight standby build. Here's an overview of the deck. Let's kind of break it down level by level here. Starting off at level zero, uh, we have this Rudy Runner. If a hand is five or more, you get an extra 2k power, so you're looking at 3-5 center runner. So you can only run to the middle position of your center stage. 3-5 power is pretty decent sized power to be able to stay on field, keep that card around a little bit longer. Next up we have back row Rudy. On play gives 1000 power to another character. And then when you play a climax, this character can return to your hand. You look at the top two cards of your deck and rearrange them and put them in any order that you want, and then give another character a 1,000 power. So you can have essentially a split 2k power, so either 1k here, 1k there, or combine on one character to get 2k in one single lane, and rearrange the top cards of your deck so you can trigger your cards in the right order that you want to, just for that additional bit of information. Very useful card in standby as it also clears up a spot on field to be able to bring in your standby target. Next up we have this Rougeard. On play, put a card from hand into clock, and then search your deck for a character. So allows you to essentially act like a Ricky without paying a stock cost. You pay the cost from hand. So you're essentially hand filtering when playing this down from your deck at the cost of putting a card from hand into clock. This can allow you to help get to level one faster. So you can get your level one cards into field to be able to get that initial bursts of power out there to then maintain board going forward. Next up we have this uh, level zero Roxy Brainstormer. When you place a climax on a stage, you can give one of your characters twin drive, which is pay one, which allows you to pay one on attack to trigger twice, helping to pay out climaxes when you trigger them to help keep your stock clean and to continue to mill additionally through that as well. And allows you to be able to potentially push more soul with your characters on field. This is a very helpful mechanic for standby decks, especially since you're not getting the soul from the climax uh, climax placement. Being able to trigger an additional time can help get additional soul when you're swinging throughout the game. Really beneficial for standby to be help get standby triggers out of your stock, so you can keep triggering them as you keep going throughout the game. It's also a brainstormer that hits from waiting room. So reveal the top four cards of your deck, each climax revealed, choose a character in waiting room to return back to hand. The pay one rest self. Integral piece of this eight standby build. Our last level zero, we have this level zero Roxy. On play, you can look at the top and bottom card of your opponent's deck and put those back to where they belong, giving you some just additional information. You can then also discard a card to choose the 1-0 event from Waiting Room to bring it back into hand. So it's an event bonder from Waiting Room, as well as being able to scry into your opponent's deck. As we go into level 1, we have this 1-1, one, one, which effectively sits at 7-5 power. This also has a combo with the standby climax that when the climax is placed on stage, you can mill 2. When the climax is placed on stage, mill two cards, and then salvage a character from waiting room equal to the level of those two cards you just milled. Big thing here is it's on climax placement. So you're also so effectively what you can do is you can do this combo first, salvage a character, and then bring out standby afterwards because of the timing of how all these things happen you're able to essentially be able to mill to help to get your standby target into waiting room to then stand by it out with the climax. So it's a really nice synergy there to be able to kind of work together with your climax to mill through your deck and to be able to get the cards you need on field with standby. Also at one, we have this one zero Galane. Gains 500 power for each of your other characters. So if you have a full board, it sits at 6K. It also has the ability to accelerate so you clock yourself from the top card of your deck at the beginning of climax phase. So you do this before the climax is placed. If you do, you could get a thousand power, which would then bump this up to a seven K power. And 
when you get a reverse with this character, you're able to look up to the top four cards of your deck and choose a character and add it to your hand. So it's a way to grant yourself on reverse plus one to hand, gain power, and help push you into level two faster so you can get your level three cards down on field. Synergistic card here with this standby deck. Also, the power threshold of a 107k power is fantastic. To be able to get some of these costless characters on field, and then with the power thresholds to help reverse your opponent's board at that same time, it's great. Also, at one, we have the generic 2k counter. This allows you to be able to back up your characters and, and hopefully keep them around longer. With the, kind of some of the power thresholds you're running here, this is a fantastic card to be able to help keep your board around longer. For our last level one card, we do run this level one event. When you play this card, you must have Roxy on field. So having the Roxy Brainstormer on field is vitally important to be able to play this card from hand. Because that's about the only real Roxy card you're going to have throughout the game consistently to be able to play this event. Roxy Brainstormer, super important with this card. When you play this card, search your deck for a character, add it to hand, discard a card from hand, put this event into memory. When you level up, you can discard this card from memory to search your deck again for a character and add it to hand. It's a really interesting combination of effects that allows you to essentially, when you level up, compress your deck. Especially with how much kind of control you have here at one, you could very effectively set up your deck to be able to refresh your deck and level up at about the same time. So you can get a sizable clock compression as you level up into two, and then you can immediately then search that fresh deck to pull characters out of that deck to make yourself even more compressed going into level two. Going into level two, we have this 2-1 backup. It's a tap counter where you can pay for, discard a character from hand to choose one of your opponent's characters and rest it. So you can deny the character from even attacking in the first place. So you're denying soul coming your way. You can stop climax combos from going off using this card to help keep you alive longer. There is a sizable cost to it with an effective five stock and an effective two cards from hand total. However, with standby and you bringing cards onto field through the standby, you're kind of saving up that stock for purposes such as this card to be able to help control games depending on what the game state is. Next up, we have this 2-2 Galane. This Galane is your main target for the level one combo turn. This is your main target at level one to stand by into the field because it can give all of your other characters a thousand power. It in itself is fine. It gets 2k power for each other character in the back row. So if you have a full back row, it sits at 9k. If you have two of these on field, 10k, which is generically fine. But because it can give a thousand power to your other characters, that bumps those ones up and then increases the power threshold of your level one game. So your 7 fives become 8 fives, your 107 Ks become 108 Ks, and this is a continuous power. So 107 K defensively, 1185 defensively. With that 2K counter, you're looking at 9 and 10 5 on level 1 cards. So you're threatening power of two twos with your level 1s. Having two of these on fields bumps us up another 1,000 power. You're using level 1s to be able to compete and contrast against your opponent's level 2s, which kind of allows you to, in a sense, bypass some of the countermeasures that a lot of decks try to run against standby decks. You're keeping your lower level cards at higher thresholds for power, allowing them to stay on field longer. Also allows you to be able to spend less resources to keep your characters on field. I do also run this 2-2 Eris that gains 1,000 power for each other and it's hand on core so it can stay alive on field. So it sits at 10k when you have a full field with character card on core. This is kind of your generic 2-2 profile. Having this also can help keep board, especially if you're going off against other decks that are fighting for board. This allows you to be able to fight those decks and keep cards on field with two soul costs for cheaper. As we go into level three, first off, we have this Paul. 
If there's a card in the front row, all of your characters gain 1500 power. So again, kind of boosting up your other characters as well. He gets twin drive by himself, so that you can on attack pay one and trigger twice. Defensively, Paul has this ability to, when you are able to cancel damage from the character facing this, from their attack, you're able to discard a character, mill the top card of your deck. If that card has a soul trigger icon on it, you can discard a character and then deal damage to your opponent on their turn equal to the damage they tried to deal to you. Potentially allow another instance of damage on your opponent's turn for simply just discarding a character from hand. Especially with how you're trying to compress yourself going into level 2, this being a very good standby target to bring onto field, you can essentially hit a spot where you are canceling damage and then dealing damage back because you're canceling damage. Next up we have the 3-2 Ghislaine. This is your top end piece for the 8 standby build. If you have a full field, this character gains 5,000 power during your turn. Your opponents cannot play events or backups from hand. So this is immune to the tap counter from before and like money counter. Things to be able to deny your combo cannot be played during this card's battle on your turn. When placed on stage from hand, you can heal. So if you don't stand by this in, but rather play it from hand, you're healing yourself. The combo itself, if the standby is in place, you can pay two to deal two, which in itself is a pretty generic top end, but with the additional power to sit at 14,000 by itself on attack that your opponent can't back up against or play events against it, it allows you to potentially break your opponent's board without them being able to stop you doing that. And get your combo off, kind of trying to help guarantee that combo. Notably, it's a burn two, so you're trying to stick small amounts of damage through all the courses of the swing. You're, you're essentially swinging for two twice in every lane if you triple combo this, not including soul triggers. Trigger once. If you're able to stick one swing for three, you only need two swings of two across the rest of your board, which is awesome, fantastic. To pair with that, um, one card that I really like along with this is this 3 2 Eris. Gains power for having characters on field. It's an early play. When placed on stage, you reveal the top card of your deck if it is a character or an event that we don't run. If it's a character or an event we don't run, you may deal one damage to your opponent. This character also has the ability to, when it becomes reversed, you can discard a card from hand to return this back to hand. So you could potentially play it again from hand to potentially get another burn one. I really like this with the top end for the Ghislaine because it gets you that burn one and then you only need three swings for two instead of trying to bank on a swing for three. It's just another instance of smaller damage and it's damage you can push early at two. So you can have this alongside the Paul to be able to deal damage on play. It, may, it might come back to hand if your opponent can get a reverse Paul dealing damage on their turn, and you bring this back down to deal damage again with this card. Really fun, interesting way to go about it. You're probably comparing this card slot in with the tap counter. They're, they're going to take in a very similar spot in regarding how much stock you're using. So you're going to choose to play this or the tap counter depending on the game situation. We then also run this 3-2 Roxy. This is your back row support. Gives everything 2k in front of it. Helps, again, power to the characters in front of it. If you were to play this from hand, you, could, you would draw two cards and then ditch one. It also has the ability of whenever you trigger a climax, you can choose one of your other characters, give a thousand power, and then twin drive as well to then turn around and pay that climax you just triggered out to trigger twice. Notably, this is not a once per turn thing, so you can choose multiple characters if you trigger multiple times. So that's our eight standby build, kind of looking this, kind of looking at this build generically overall. Level zero is a rather larger power threshold at zero, with three five runner running around. Ways of boosting powers then and ways of granting abilities to help sustain the game throughout. It's a rather smaller list of zeros, not a lot of diversity in the zeros because you have a lot going forward with the next level one and a higher. Level one, you're immediately throwing down big bodies and power, and 
trying to keep that there, as well as selectivity and compression with the event. Along with selectivity, hand filtering, and future compression with the event. Trying to recur that event as often as possible, to compress as often as possible in when you level up, to effectively close out your opponent. Level 2, playing into that same game plan, keeping power high, playing off the idea of helping push power to level 1s, using that twin drive to be able to push soul, and tap counter to deny opponent's lanes when you need to. You're going to probably use the tap counter once per game, just realistically with stock costs and whatnot. So making sure you have the tools necessary to choose the right moments to strike. Level 3, you have the standby targets like Paul, you have the early plays like Eris, and then you have your end game pieces like the Ghislaine to be able to continually push damage at the top end to close out your opponent. This is going to be likely the more popular build from Ashoko Tensei. However, there is another build as well that we want to look at and address. And that is the Choice Pants build. Here's the list overall. So you can see all of the pieces, parts that what make up this list. I'm going to hit some of the pieces that weren't in the standby list. So that way we can see why those would be useful in these kinds of decks. We saw the Rudy. We saw the Rougeard. So we have this Eris here on play blink. So you can choose one of your characters, send it to memory, and bring it back, removing your cross-turn effects. It also has a climax ditch to salvage a character. It's a one-of that allows us to be able to clear out nasty effects like Neg Soul and whatnot to be able to be able to continue pushing our game plan forward. We looked at the Roxy Brainstormer. We looked at the Event Bonder. We also run this level zero Rudy. When this card is placed on stage, if your opponent has one or less characters in the front row that's cost zero or lower, you can put it into waiting room. So you can get rid of cards like the like the level zero clean cut runner from Kaguya. You can get rid of runners that are the sole runners on the field. Like what we see with slime often enough. You're able to remove cards from your opponent's stage that would help them benefit in some way by just sending it away. It also has the ability of when this card goes to waiting room, you can pay to to salvage a character back to hand. Could be a helpful way to get additional characters from waiting room, especially if you're going to be in certain situations. Help guarantee that you get that character back. We then also run the Climax Swap Roxy. When placed on stage, you can choose when your characters and that character gets 1500 power, so help push power when you play the Climax Swap, and you pay one dish one Climax Swap. So it's just making sure you get your level one combo into hand because you're going to need that to help get, keep going forward. You want to recur that combo as often as possible to help keep generating resources. So that's our level zero lineup. Generically, this lineup is a tiny bit on the smaller side compared to the eight standby build for just base powers. But you have enough generic power in here that might be helpful in some ways, like with the additional power from the Climax Swap, Roxy, or removing characters from field with the PR Rudy here to be able to clean up your opponent's board at zero still. As we hit level one, we start off here with this 1-1 one, one anti-change stock bomb. So it allows you to remove your opponent's characters that are essentially brought in through either standby or change effects or early plays. So a way to remove them from field, deny encore effects when it becomes reversed. Sits at 4k power base, but it also has the ability to ditch the level zero runner from hand at the beginning of attack phase to search your deck for the level one climax and place it onto the spot. We then run also this one zero Roxy. The big ability you're running here for is it gives your level one combo an initial thousand power, all of your other ones. So it doesn't have to be in front, it's just an assist to that specific character. And it has an additional assist to all other characters to gain 500 power. So your combo pieces essentially get 1500 power 
in addition continuously on both turns. Just one of these is enough to affect all three lanes. On top of that, you can also play with its other act ability that allows you... You can also then play with around with its act ability that allows you to, if you're level three, discard this card into waiting room to play the back row 3-2 onto stage in this spot for free. So a an, an pretty nice way to save stock when you get to the end game and continually helping with that role as an assist. Next up, we have this PR card with Roxy and Rudy. This is the tournament reward uh, card for March. With this, we have this profile that allows us to be able to, on play, choose one of your opponent's characters, and that character cannot move to another position of stage. So it's a way to be able to lock in place cards like the 1-1 one, one Yoshino from Dal, or standby targets that are stood by into the back row. You can kind of lock those in place in those spots. It also has the ability of when it becomes reversed, you can remove cost zero characters to the bottom of your opponent's deck. So it allows you to be able to free up lanes on your opponent's turn They're for cost zero characters and lock in place characters that you don't want running around. So it can help deny standby from being as free as it wants to be. And it can take out characters with cost zero effects. Uh, so it's a card with a pretty nice profile. We saw a lot of this with the Nolan from Ruby during uh, Bushy Road Rumble. We also run the 1-0 event in this deck as well. And then we also have the 1-0 combo. This is the trial deck combo that on attack, if the choice is in place and you have experience 2 or higher, you can look up to three cards from the top of your library, choose one character, put it into your hand, and then gain 1500 power. It sits at climax 6k. When you do the combo, 7-5. With the back row assist to this card, it puts it up to 9k, which is often enough to be able to step over standby targets and then allow it to be able to sit defensively at 6-5. So you can have power defensively, and then have this massive power offensively as well. So, fantastic card to be able to help mill through your deck, have a little bit of selectivity with that, and on top of that, have a decent power threshold to step up against standby targets. So having like two of these and one of the PR, all of a sudden you have a real like power threshold going on here and denial tools going on here. For level two, we run the two on tap counter. That's the only level two we run for this deck. Once we hit level three, uh, we have a couple different profiles that really help us here. Um, we have this 3-2 Rudy that allows us to be able to, if we have four more characters play this early, experience six to gain an additional power and then until the end of your opponent's next turn it gains four or five power but and both players can't play backups so really matches up well with what we see the miyuki in kaguya that sits at three two very similar profile it doesn't have the clock kick that that one does but it has additional power to be able to potentially step over the miyuki and to be able to deny power that way you can kind of contest board with that break standby walls that get too big. It allows you a lot of leeway with this card. We also run another early play Rudy, two less climaxes and waiting room early play that allows you to ditch a card to heal to stock. Again, trying to help save stock so that way you can pull off multiple versions of your end game combo. The end game combo itself during your turn gets 2k power on play heal. At the end of the card's attack, you can choose one of the two following effects. You can either deal one damage to your opponent, or ditch two cards from hand to burn three. So a kind of optional burn here of like what direction you want to go. At minimum, you are able to deal one damage, no additional cost, or ditch two, burn three. So you can kind of set up how you want to burn in your endgame. So that way you can set up for the best version of precise damage as possible. And then it also runs the back row assist that we talked about before. So looking at choice pants as a whole, 
you're really looking forward to this early game and trying to get the most advantage out of it as possible trying to really set up with the event set up with the combo to be able to get through your deck quickly as well as get the pieces you need going forward you're really trying to recur the combo over and over again get as much cards into hand as possible so you can ditch two cards from hand with the combo multiple times you can compete with board you're locking things in place you're trying to really finesse the board as much as possible to essentially close out the game there are some other tech cards that are nice that can be other options included with some of this stuff stuff that didn't make the cut for my list but might make the cut for yours for example we have a zero zero that allows you to be able to have two different potential effects off of it you can rest it to choose one of your other characters and give on reverse send that character to your opponent's stock to try to help get around things such like encore or you can discard an event and rest this card to salvage a character from waiting room so you can turn your events into salvages you also have this roxy that allows you to be able to you also have this cheery allows you to be able to when this card goes to waiting room discard a card look at the top four choose a level one or higher and add it to hand we also see cards like this marker a card underneath it and which gains it power so it sits at 4k and it's a clean cut which can also be another pretty potential powerful level zero as more of the top end you have cards like this roxy that allows you to be able to on play heal and then pay to ditch to on attack to burn two you have cards like this rudy that allows you to be able to gain power has hex proof so you can't be targeted by opponent effects and allows you to look at cards based off the number of characters you have on field so you can try to draw into climaxes you have cards like this level zero sylphet that allow you to be able to mill put go into memory that also help with memory conditions for other parts of the thing like this level three sylphet that allows you to be able to stock swap your opponent it gains encore and power if it has that level zero sylphet in memory so you have a lot of different potential things you can do with this set. There have even been teching in this level 3 bar combo. There are a lot of different things you can do here. Splashing in green can help out quite a bit. There are a lot of different potentials here. Looking at this choice pants, looking at 8 standby. Again, 8 standby is going to be more of that build you're going to see more often. But we're really looking forward to seeing Mashoka Tensai as it comes out and allows it to be able to impact the game as it does. Because a lot of these abilities are going to be things that are very important to the metagame going forward. With that, we're going to have gameplay of the 8 standby deck on Thursday. On Tuesday next week, we're going to have another clock talk talking about the updates to Springfest and how basically everything has changed. And looking at information from Jay's pre stream that has already happened to be able to see if there's any additional information for English. Obviously, this is recorded beforehand, so no idea yet. We'll find out what happened from that stream. And we'll report back any information that directly affects the English version of the game. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, have a good one.